gorgeous Georgian lady is quite a sight to see. For some splendid beauty tips, pay attention, listen to me. White is beautiful, dear ladies, smear your face with paint of lead. Never mind the lead has made the men who mixed it ill or dead. Take some silk of red or black, cut a circle or a crescent, stick it to your face to cover smallpox scars, it's much more pleasant. Shave your eyebrows clean away, take a trap and catch some mice, make false eyebrows with the mouse skin, stick them on, you'll look so nice. Next you need a monster wig If you want to look real smashing When your wig has reached the roof Then you'll be the height of fashion Decorate your lovely hairpiece Use the feathers of a parrot Add some ribbons, fruit and flowers from your ear, then hang a carrot. Make your face look soft and chubby, pack your mouth with balls of cork. Hang your false teeth in the middle, hope you don't choke when you talk. Last of all, you need a fan. Flutter it oh so demurely, then you're sure to bag your man. Vile Victorians. Viewers may like to know that all the names in the following sketch are genuine Victorian names. Good day. <laughs> isn't here today, so I'll be taking the register. Uh, now, I don't know any of you, so be sure to call out when you hear your name. Raspberry Lemon. Lettuce Burger. Bovril. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I think I must have picked up a shopping list. No, miss, those are children's names. They're not answering because they're off sick. Bovril and Raspberry. Honestly, Christian names have got really weird since Victoria became Queen. Well, OK, on, on with the register. No way, miss. Sit down. What are you talking about? You said, OK, on the register. I'm OK. OK, Johnson. Well, OK. Uh, unless I give permission, never get out of your seat. Yes, miss. Why are you standing up? You said, never get out of your seat. I'm never. Never rook rook. Has nobody got an ordinary name in this classroom? Yes. Toilet? All right, be quick. No, that's my name. I think that's quite a normal name. My sister's called Baboon. Toilet and Baboon. Your parents must be evil. No, that's evil over there. Yes. I've got an ordinary name, miss. It's Susan. Ah, that's more like it. Susan Semolina Thrower. Right, let's just try and get through this, shall we? I'll say your names, you say here, and uh, I'll try not to say your names accidentally. Happy? Yes, miss. Don't tell me your name's happy. Right, register. Here we go. Freezer Breezer. Here, miss. Princess Cheese. Here, miss. Minty Badger. Here, miss. Scary Looker. No, I'm sorry. Why would anybody call their child Scary Looker? Forget I asked. Now! I am Miss Farting Clack. Good morning, Miss Farting Clack. <laughs> oh, 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 hello there. Yes, those really were all real Victorian names. Minty Badger and Princess Cheese. <laughs> hey, it makes what celebrities call their children nowadays almost normal. <laughs> People from the different bits of ancient Greece were very different from each other. 
the Greeks from Athens and Sparta really were like chalk and cheese. This is the Athenian family of Athens. Hi, <laughs> I'm a playwright. And they're doing a wife swap with the Spartan family of Sparta. I'm a warrior. So how will these two very different Greek cultures get on? bag, Spartan slave, and then go and tell the master of the house that Mrs. Athenian has arrived. I am the master of the house. Oh, I'm sorry. And, um, and where's your dear son? I believe, like us, you have a seven-year-old boy. I do. He's out naked in the hills fighting with the other Spartan children. Oh. And when will he be back? When he's 15. Things aren't getting off to a much better start in the Athenian household. Oh, welcome! Welcome, Mrs. Spartan, to our home. I'm Mr. Athenian. This is my son. Why is he so puny and sickly? Why was he not taken up a mountain to die at birth? <laughs> <laughs> What's that water coming from his eyes, eh? <laughs> she's, she's joking. She's joking. <laughs> and Spartans have a very different idea of a woman's role. Right. Time to get something for supper. Great. What are you hunting? What are you hunting? Go get us a rabbit. But I'm just a delicate Athenian woman. I'm not allowed out of the house apart from to visit other women or to go to funerals. You are going to a funeral. The rabbits. These Spartans are unbelievable. You're at school, Spartan girls learn how to wrestle and throw javelins. Imagine that, a girl going to school. They should be at home, learning how to sew. <laughs> so, Mr Athenian, any parts in your plays for a strong woman? Oh yes, yes. Right, then I should play it. Oh no, <laughs> you're a woman. All female parts are played by men. <laughs> All oh, right, well, I'll come and watch it then. Oh, don't be silly. You're not allowed. You're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> ah! What a wimp this Athenian is, eh? I mean, what kind of a job is writing plays, eh? In Sparta, if you want a good night out, you just go and slaughter a wolf. Simple as. It's time for the Spartans and the Athenians to settle their differences. Look what you did to my wife. It's not my fault she fainted. She should be tough like my woman. She's no woman. I'm no slave like Athenian women. You uncivilised Spartan brutes. You lardy darn Athenian sissies. Right, that's about as much as I can take, OK? All right. Now, there's only one thing for it. Agreed! A fight to the death! No, no, I, I was actually thinking of a vote to see whose way of life is best. Um, OK. I vote Spartan. I vote Spartan. I vote Athenian. I don't get a vote. I'm only a woman. I make that 2-1. To Sparta! Run, Jean! <laughs> Chopped 
bottom and hack But what made their red blood curl? Bad enough being beaten But beaten by a girl? Whacked them, smacked them Boy, how we attacked them Near and far Ha 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 Flayed them, slayed them Up and down parade them Booty car Tough is by far Colchester, London, St Albans Everybody talk about dead Romans <laughs> On up the Roman road that's known as Watlin Street They trapped us in the forest then thrashed us to our defeat By now you've guessed I'm not the kind of guy who'll sit and cry Be sold as slave to Romans, you know I'd rather die They tried to take me prisoner so I led the Roman boys on Instead of giving in to them I swallowed special poison Martyr, smarter, capture and on starter This was our last hurrah Dismiss. Vile Victorians. Did you know we Victorians were a very inventive bunch? But sometimes the old methods are the best methods. Good day. This is Victorian Dragon's Den. It's Victorian Britain, an age of enterprise and industry when many great inventions were, well, invented by inventors. So can any of tonight's candidates convince the dragons to put money behind their ideas? First up, it's Mr Nathaniel Twonk. Gentlemen and lady, allow me to explain a most efficacious device that I have invented. I call it the automatic bottle washer. This device will automatically wash bottles for hours on end without the need for attention or adjustment. Ah! Oh, it's marvellous, yes. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Our next hopeful inventor is Mrs Edwina Gruelbucket. Gentlemen and madam, I wish to present you with a golden opportunity to invest in my most marvellous invention, the automatic potato harvester. Wonderful. I'm in. I'm in. Well, it's been a good day for our hopefuls so far. Let's see if Sir Chesterton Widebelly can make it a clean sweep. Lady and gentlemen, I have invented something which I believe will truly change the world. I call it the vacuum cleaner. But what does it do? It sucks. Oh dear. It sucks, all right. The dragons aren't impressed. Never mind. Can Chesterton win them round? You could use this instead. Oh, you see, now that's more like it. Yes, I I'm in. Oh, I'm in. I'm in, yes. The Victorians made children do all sorts of terrible jobs. But they also invented lots of technology. Electricity, the railway, steel ships, the car, the radio. Slimy stewards. The English Civil War pitted the Royalist supporters of the King against the Roundhead supporters of Parliament. Everyone took sides, even highwaymen, like James Hind. I just don't know why we couldn't just take the main road. It's making me nervous. Because it's quicker this way on foot, isn't it? Look, you don't need to worry, it's perfectly safe. Stay in and deliver your money or your life! Oh, take my wedding ring! Yeah. Hang on, hang on, let's not get ahead of ourselves. What? what? Well, before we get on to the actual robbery, there's just a few quick questions I need to ask. Are you, or have you ever been, a parliamentarian or in any other way opposed to the King Charles? Absolutely not. No, we're royalists. Oh, that's good. Yeah, something of a royalist myself, actually. Really? Small world. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> uh, would you consider yourself to be enjoying good fortunes, suffering bad fortunes, or don't know? Uh, my entire estate has just been taken over by round heads. Half of my family have been killed and my carriage has been burnt to the ground. Bad fortunes it is. It honestly is terrible, Wendy, and all this crime. Oh, and last but not least, would you say that you were really rich, a bit rich, quite poor or very poor? Well, this is my last sixpence. 
very poor, righto. So, to summarise, you're down on your luck and you don't actually have any money. So then, I guess there's only one thing for it. <gasps> Here's a bag of gold coins to tide you over. So, sorry, it's just traditionally, in my experience, robberies don't work this way? No. Well, if you were a parliamentarian, it'd be a very different story indeed. But the thing is, I've got a bit of a soft spot for fellow royalists, especially if they're in a hard time of it. So, go on, fill your boots. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> well, I suppose I better shoot, so to speak. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, my day you go now. Well, he seemed nice. Absolutely charming. Brandon, deliver your money or your life. Oh, thank you, we're royalists. <laughs> <laughs>